antioxidants. Um, we know we've been aware that we need vitamins in our diet. And, you know, I don't think as a kid, we recollect or understand that like our bodies don't make these things. That's why we have to take supplements. You know, that's why, especially, um, pregnant women, it's a big deal that they take prenatal vitamins, um, to help supplement their body and their growing baby, um, with the things that we need. So here's the deal with vitamins. It's kind of a fine line because these are trace things that we need. Like we need them in small amounts. And so it's not like we have to eat tons and tons and tons of them, but bad things can happen if we are deficient in them. Okay. So that's the big deal. It's like, we don't need a lot, but we don't, we have to have them. So, um, few, really a definition here, um, vitamins are organic molecules. Okay. So when I say organic molecule, I, what I mean there is they're made up of carbon and oxygen and nitrogen. They're not metal ions. They're not ionic compounds. Okay. So they're organic molecules, as I said, essential in trace amounts. And we have to obtain them from our diet. My daughter's obsessed right now. She has these little vitamin gummies. You have to be careful with kids' vitamins. They can be loaded and laced with sugar. Um, so always check the sugar content if you're going to take like a gummy style vitamin. Obviously, that's the kind I give her because she can't swallow like a pill right now. Uh, but she, every morning she like gets so excited to take her vitamin. I'm like, I hope you're always this way because adult vitamins suck and they taste bad. Um, two classes though, there are water soluble vitamins and fat soluble. So we know a whole lot more about the water soluble than we do the fat soluble regarding the mechanisms for how they work. We know the significance of both, like what they do in the body. We just don't know the details and the nitty gritty of how they work. And that's not what we're getting into this class anyways, but I wanted to mention that. So water soluble, they're used as cofactors, coenzymes. Um, they can be coenzymes themselves or they can be cofactors to coenzymes, okay? They contain lots of uh, hydrophilic groups, hydrophilic in nature. That's why they're water soluble, right? Things that have a lot of electronegative polar groups, alcohol groups, carboxylic acid groups, that, that's what makes them soluble in water. So I wanted to point this out. Niacin is a cofactor to the coenzyme nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, lovingly known as NAD. And we're going to really get to that tomorrow. NAD is a coenzyme in the citric acid cycle, and then it feeds right into the electron transport chain, which is what our body uses to make ATP. We're getting that tomorrow and Friday. Okay, so I love that we're actually introducing this today. Um, so niacin is a vitamin that we need that is a cofactor. You can see where it fits into the molecule for NAD, which is the coenzyme, which is a larger molecule. Okay, um, another example pantothenic acid is a cofactor to the coenzyme called coenzyme A, or we'll call it a whole lot tomorrow, CoA. Um, tomorrow or next week, I forget when we get to CoA. But so that's examples of how the cofactor and the coenzyme fit together and, and then they go perform their functions. Um, we also then, some vitamins act as antioxidants. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, I skipped over fat soluble. So fat soluble, like I said, we don't understand the mechanisms how they work, but we do know, I'll show you a table that we do know a lot about the significance of fat soluble vitamins, but they're stored in fat tissue. Okay. So physically, or sorry, structurally, how do you think fat soluble um, vitamins are different? They probably are a lot more hydrophobic. They probably just have a lot more carbon hydrogen parts to them and a lot less electronegative elements and, and atoms like oxygen and nitrogen. Okay. Um, okay. Antioxidants. Some vitamins are antioxidants. Why are antioxidants important? Don't read the, you're probably already reading it. Okay. Antioxidants are important because they squelch molecules that can oxidize things in our body. Oxidation is a good thing when it's controlled and when it's done in the way we want it done. Random oxidation is bad for our bodies. That's why x-rays and high energy molecules are so dangerous. We've got to wear a lead vest when you go in for an x-ray, right? Because you don't want high energy particles coming into your body and just oxidizing and breaking down random things. Oxidation is good, but only when it's controlled, like fire, okay? Fire is a good thing when it's in a fireplace or a fire pit, not when it's random, right? Um, same thing with oxidation. We don't want oxidation randomly through our body. So we have these special antioxidant substances, such as vitamin E. You can see the structure of it here. 
And what they do is they go around and they prevent oxidation by reacting with oxidizing agents, free radicals. Has anybody heard of what a free radical is? You often see it like this, like O with a little lone electron. Something with a lone electron on it, an unpaired electron is a free radical. Often these are contain oxygen atoms, okay? But they react with these and they kind of squelch the oxidizing agents so that they can't harm our body in bad ways. Um, so vitamin E, C, beta carotene, selenium, these are um, antioxidants, right? And will react with oxidizing agents. So these next slides really are just tables. Um, and here's what I'll say about these tables. You don't have to memorize everything on this table, but you need to have something in your back pocket to pull out on the exam. If I say, explain to me, give an example of a water soluble vitamin and explain its significance, you can pick which one you want to write, okay? But you need to at least know an example. I want you to walk away from this course knowing an example of a water-soluble and a fat-soluble vitamin and minerals as well, okay? So that's all I'll say um, on the exam. I'm definitely going to have why vitamins are important on there. And I want you to be able to provide me with an example and the significance of um, at least one, okay? A safeguard, I would, I would know two and their significance, okay? but I'm not gonna tell you which two to know. What I did think was cool, so if you're looking at this table and it shows you all the water-soluble vitamins and their significance, um, look at the source, okay? A lot of you are in nutrition or headed into nutrition in some realm. And so you care about you know, our diets and um, what kind of foods provide what kind of nutrients to our bodies. And um, milk and meat are, well, meat especially is like a source for all different kinds of vitamins. And I just don't think I realized that growing up that like meat is how a lot, I would think vegetables, right? Would be the number one way we get our vitamins. That's what our parents tell us. And that's probably for a good reason. We want our kids to eat vegetables, but because they're loaded with other nutrients as well. But meat is, and milk um, are two primary sources of tons of different vitamins. So that, um, some people might find that surprising. Now, obviously vegetables are on there too, but um, we can get lots of vitamins just from eating meat. So if you don't eat meat, you have to make sure that you do get vitamins. Some people I know take like B12 supplements or different supplements if they're vegetarians or vegans. Well, <clears throat> yeah, because B12 is only uh, really milk and meat are the only ways you get it, so, okay. And for the, for the exam, so, so know at least an example of a vitamin, its significance, I, I would know like, like essentially what I'm telling you is pick a column, okay? So if you're gonna pick niacin, um, you don't necessarily know, have to know how much we need per day. I don't, we have labels on things on, on stuff that can tell us those. We don't have to memorize that. But I want you to know like what would happen if you had too much of it or if you had a deficiency in it, okay? So don't just tell me, oh, niacin and coenzyme, blah, blah, blah. Like I want you to know the significance, why we need it in the body and what happens if we don't have enough. Same idea with the fat soluble vitamins. Uh, at least for two of them, know the significance and what can happen if you don't have enough. Okay. Um, what is what might trip you up? Be aware that um, vitamin C is is a water soluble. Whoops, I thought I was highlighting. Vitamin C is water soluble, but all the other vitamins A, D, K, E are fat soluble. Okay, so make sure you know that difference. That vitamin C is not fat soluble; it's a water soluble. Okay. Um, lastly, minerals. So minerals are not vitamins. They're different. They're trace elements. Okay. So these are not organic molecules. Minerals are elements. These are oftentimes transition metals that we need in our body because we understand now they serve as cofactors um, in enzymes. We need them in the active sites of enzymes. We need them to help maintain gradients across membranes. There's other reasons we need them too. That's just two examples. Um, so we have to get them from our diets because our body doesn't make transition metals. Okay. <clears throat> and, um, oh, this is really important. Why do we need transition? Another example of why we need transition metals, transition metals specifically. So not the main group one and two elements, but transition metals. You guys know on a periodic table, which ones are transition and which ones are main group one and two transition metals can hold varied states of charge. So like, for example, copper could be a plus one or plus two, okay? Um, 
Oh, well, so, I mean, all different kinds. So zinc could be a plus two or a plus three. Iron can be a plus two or a plus three. And because they can be two different charges, we can use them again and again and again. We can recycle them through redox reactions, okay? These are critical for redox reactions and they play really important roles in pathways such as the electron transport chain. Um, I'm trying to think, there's probably gonna be other pathways where we have to use redox reaction, but um, because they can hold very oxidation states, they're, they're critical. We're actually getting to the electron transport chain either end of the day tomorrow or Friday. So, um, this table shows you that you need some minerals more than others, okay? So that's why they call them macro minerals and mi uh, micro minerals. And so some, it's just because you need more of, of like your potassium and your calcium and your chloride and sodium than you do of like copper and selenium and magnesium, okay? Um, for these, I'm probably not gonna ask you to memorize like all the deficiencies and effects of excess, um, but know the difference between uh, macro and micro, be able to give an example of a, of a macro and, and a micro mineral, okay? Again, I'm not gonna ask you to list all of them, um, but I would ask you maybe to tell me an example of one or the other, okay? All right, that's it, that's it. Questions? Well, no other yeah, Robin. Um, so like you said on the test, like we just need to know like two of our own. So like on the test, you wouldn't ask us like a certain two, like would no. you? No, so you know how for like on exam two, I said I listed like the different lipids and I said, tell me the significance of these. Um, what I'll probably do is say, give me an example of one or two vitamins or you know, minerals or whatever, and tell me why they're significant, okay? Uh, I'm not asking you to walk away from this class knowing every specific vitamin and mineral. There's just too many. But I do want you to say, oh, you know what? Vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin, or, um, you know, vitamin A is fat-soluble, and here's why this one is important. I want you to at least have, know an example of these. Okay. Now, the amino acids are different. I want you to know all the side chains. So, again, y'all are going to get a index card for this exam and so put on there whatever you think you need to know but i want you to know the different classes of enzymes i want you to be able to 